Hello, and welcome to another edition of Orthopedic Sports Medicine Patient Educational Series with Dr. Adam Drackey. In this video, we're going to explore some of the different passive range of motion exercises and stretches that we expect that you will be doing following your shoulder surgery. Whether it be a surgery on your rotator cuff or a biceps tendon or your labrum, at some point we're going to be getting you out of your sling and start moving your shoulder. Oftentimes this is going to be during a period where only passive range of motion is allowed. Passive range of motion means that someone or something else is lifting your arm up above your head. So for example, if I am just lifting my arm by myself, this is called active range of motion exercises or independent range of motion. For many types of shoulder surgery, as we attempt to try to regain range of motion following discontinuation of your sling, we want to avoid active range of motion exercises so as to not put too much stress on your repair. Once we remove the sling, we will usually start you in formal outpatient physical therapy. The therapist will be pushing and stretching your arm up above your head, up and out to the side, as well as working to stretch it and rotating it out and rotating it back in. However, you are only in physical therapy typically for three days a week, which means that on the other four days a week, you need to be doing a home exercise program to be working on your passive range of motion every single day. The full restoration of passive range of motion of the shoulder is by far the biggest hurdle for patients to achieve following their shoulder surgery. In residual or long-term post-operative stiffness following shoulder surgery is one of the most common complications. Because of that, it is crucial that you understand your home exercise program and how to do your passive stretching of your shoulder every single day. Once it is safe to come out of the sling and start your stretching exercises, we want to be doing this right away, every day, so as not to develop stiffness in the shoulder following surgery. There are two main exercises that I'm going to go over in this video regarding passive elevation of the shoulder. So in other words, getting the arm all the way up above your head without using your own power. These exercises include tabletop exercises as well as wall walks. Both of these can help in assisting patients to get their arm above their head without using their own muscles. So let's start with tabletop exercises. The exam bed here is going to act as my tabletop, but you can certainly use just your dining room table or a countertop in the kitchen. And what we want to work on is two primary forms of elevation of the arm, both forward flexion, which means that the arm is coming out above your head in front of your body, as well as abduction, which means that the shoulder or the arm is coming out up above your head, out to the side of your body. So for forward flexion exercises with your tabletop exercises, you're simply going to place the arm onto your tabletop, and as you lean your body forward, you're going to use your body weight in order to slowly push the arm and stretch it up above your head. As you lean further and further, you get closer to all the way above your head. You can then slowly walk it back up and control it all the way. The second elevation with tabletop exercises is abduction. For abduction, you want to come to the side of the table so that you are leaning out to the side of your body. And then you will simply be leaning in 
out to the side with your body weight to push the shoulder up and above your head. Once you are done, you can slowly start bringing it up in a slow and controlled fashion. When you get to a point where it feels like there is a lot of resistance and a lot of pain or discomfort, this is the end point. And so you want to hold that end point for 20 seconds and then come back out. We want slow and controlled stretches with sustained stretch at your maximum height of your arm. The second type of home exercises that you can do to achieve full passive elevation of the arm, both in forward flexion and abduction, are called wall walks. And again, like a tabletop slide, you don't need any special equipment in order to perform these stretches. We're simply going to use a flat surface of the wall to help assist in using your body weight to push the arm up above your head. So again, in forward flexion for a wall walk, you're going to be facing the wall. And you want to use your fingers and simply walk the arm up the wall until you get it to a position where you can then start sliding your arm by leaning your body weight in to create the stretch and the power to get the arm all the way above the head again without using your own muscles. And you just simply reach higher and higher until that arm is all the way up. Like the tabletops, you want to hold it at the top to get a good sustained stretch. You then want to bring it back down in a slow and controlled fashion until you are all the way back down to your side. You then want to repeat those exercises in abduction, which again is out to the side of your body. So you simply want to walk your arm up the wall until you can get it to slide and then lean in with your body weight to stretch the arm out to the side of your body all the way above your head. Again, once you get to the top of your range of motion, you want to hold it for a 20 second count for a good sustained stretch. You then can slowly bring the arm down in a controlled fashion until it is to your side. I recommend that patients do these exercises multiple times per day in order to achieve full range of motion of their shoulder. Now let's look at some rotational exercises that you can do to get internal and external rotation of the shoulder with passive range of motion exercises. Now let's look at passive external rotation stretches. The therapist might have taught you the exercise where you hold a broomstick and you push with your good arm, stretching or rotating your bad arm out away from your body. There are a number of different ways to isolate external rotation in stretches. I like to talk about placing the arm into an open doorway or placing the arm up against the side of a countertop in order to achieve the same goal. For this particular stretch, it is key that you isolate only external rotation. So as you are rotating your arm out away from your body, you want your elbow to stay tight up against your body as opposed to doing one of these, which is cheating, okay? And so what I teach patients is to hold the elbow up against the body and then place the arm into an open doorway. You can then simply rotate your body out away from that doorway, isolating the arm to rotate into external rotation. Again, like the elevation exercises, when you get to the extreme of external rotation for you, you want to hold it for a slow, sustained stretch for 20 seconds and then come back around. 
oftentimes patients do much better with their elevation than they do their rotation. And it's not uncommon for patients to get full elevation of their shoulder, but still have pain or symptoms in the shoulder because of associated rotational stiffness. So it's important to identify residual stiffness specifically in the areas of internal or external rotation. If we've identified stiffness in external rotation in you, this will be a key exercise for you moving forward in order to achieve full range of motion of your shoulder. Now we're going to talk about internal rotation stretching. This is oftentimes the stretch where you're bringing your arm back behind your back and can be one of the last ranges of motion for patients to get back. Oftentimes the therapist will have you doing stretches back behind your back, perhaps you're throwing a towel up behind your back and using your other arm to lift your surgical arm back behind your back. All of this is done in an attempt to try to increase your passive internal rotation of the shoulder. In addition to that, as part of your home exercise program, I like to teach patients something called a sleeper stretch. To help us with the sleeper stretch today, I've enlisted the help of Carrie to demonstrate how we do these stretches. I personally feel as though the sleeper stretches are a little easier to do just because they are, they, it is a stretch that you are able to do more out in front of your body. And so it's just a little easier for you to see your progress and to see the, the arm as you are doing your stretches. So in order to do a sleeper stretch, you simply lay on your operative side. So in this case, Carrie, we're working on her right shoulder. So she lays on the right shoulder. And the key is, is that all of the angles of your body need to be at right angles, which means 90 degrees. So in other words, I tell patients that the back needs to be straight up and down at 90 degrees. We then bring the operative arm out away from the body 90 degrees and then the elbow straight up and down at 90 degrees. And so this gives us isolation of just internal rotation. And what I have patients then do is use their opposite arm to help push down the palm towards the floor or towards the bed or whatever you're laying on. And this, you're gonna feel it pulling in the back of the shoulder as you're working internal rotation. I always compare your internal rotation with your sleeper stretches to your other arm, and the goal is always to reestablish internal rotation of the shoulder equal to that of your other arm. These exercises do not need any special equipment. I recommend that you just simply lay in the living room carpet or on a bed in order to perform these stretches. I hope this video has helped you to better understand some of the home exercises required to achieve full passive range of motion of your shoulder following shoulder surgery. These exercises are perhaps one of the most important thing for patients to fully embrace and to do on a daily basis in order to avoid the very common post-operative complication of shoulder stiffness. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a good day.